What's up guys, it's Ryan with the MXG channel again, and today I wanna to talk about some videos that popped up. Most of them popped up overnight, like three or 4 a.m., uh, because apparently KTM did a big media day at Redbud in Buchanan, Michigan, with a lot of the uh, more mainstream uh, media for motocross and dirt bikes. So Swap Moto was dropping videos, Vital was dropping videos, uh, Motocross Action uh, was dropping videos. And uh, so we have a plethora of new information uh, that we've been digging for about these new models. Uh, coming out today. Uh, they also had a pre-production version of the 300SX two-stroke there uh, that Mosman got to ride and, and the other guys got to ride. Uh, but I just want to uh, look at some of these videos with you guys today and tomorrow probably uh, and, and dissect a little bit of this information and maybe uh, uh, highlight some of this information that they might have glazed over and, um, you know, uh, get to the bottom of some stuff. So first of all, let's watch a little bit of this uh, Swap Moto video where they're talking about the changes on the new KTMs. Welcome to Red Bud Track and Trail here in Buchanan, Michigan. I'm Don Maeda and I'm joined by Andy Jefferson of the KTM Group. We're here today to ride the 2023 KTM motocross lineup. Um, Andy, so the 250 and 450 mm -hmm. look pretty much identical to the factory editions we just took delivery of uh, a couple months ago. Yes. So I'm assuming all the same changes apply. Yes. New chassis, bodywork, everything. Completely new chassis, new bodywork, new motors. Um, so yeah, the, the transition from the factory edition to this is, besides plastic, obviously, and skid plate, front disc guard, that kind of thing. Triple that clamp. Comes on. Okay, guys, so this is the first thing that uh, I was happy to confirm. Uh, normally, when you see a uh, factory edition, by the time the base model of that factory edition comes out, there are some... Uh, minor t minor changes, some minor tweaks to kind of refine that base bottle. And uh, in the past, that's kind of scared people away from getting the factory edition because they knew the base model might be a little bit more refined. Um, that's not the case this year. I didn't think it was, but he's just confirmed it here. The factory edition and the base model, besides the, the bling and the upgrades you get on the bike, um, there are no other changes. He says there's not even valving changes in the forks, which I kind of, I find hard, hard to believe, but. Triple clamps that come on and the seat, as you see, this bike has really the wrong seat on it. It should have a seat that looks like that because this happens to be one that we use for a photo shoot with some power parts, parts on it. But other than that, everything has changed over from the factory edition uh, to these two bikes, the 250, 450. Uh, and then two, the, probably the, the one thing that we're here today to talk about, the big things, there's a couple of big ones. I don't understand why he's highlighting the 350. Uh, the way he says all new is like the 350 is all new and the others aren't, they're, they're all all new. But the 350, which is all new. Yeah. From the ground up, again, new frame, new motor, um, a definitely different feel of the, the motor. Um, all internal, a bunch of internal changes, not a lot of parts to swap over from the old bike to the new bike. As you see the, from the head, the head looks kind of like the 250, it's a little bit taller. Um, 350 pipes, a little bit uh, smaller and, and rounder. Um, but every, all the new technology is in this bike. Along all with the new the, technology is in all the bikes. Mounts, uh, new uh, hour meter, uh, but you still have the quality parts, like always. We have Brembo brakes, clutch. The clutch in the motor is is great, like we've always had the mm -hmm. the uh, velvet spring clutch. So those kinds of things are, are just cross 
pack over, but there's a lot of changes with the motor and these guys will find out today when they get to ride the new 350. Okay, so as far as... <clears throat> yeah, so not really sure why he's highlighting on the 350. I'm thinking that this is just a guy, um, he obviously works for KTM, but I think they just kind of pulled him aside. He wasn't prepped for any kind of presentation like this would be my guess. But if that's the case, I think KTM needs some guys on hand that are ready to do presentations like this and talk to the media. They're maybe a little more prepped. There's a 283, 250, 450 go. No suspension changes, setting no. changes. It's no. identical bike. <laughs> yes. Just production 23. Yes. Okay, yeah. So, as you said, the 350 is all new. Um, same chassis changes. Um, the engine. What was the target with the engine? Just more power everywhere? They were trying to mm -hmm. develop more power, but along with still making the rideability of the bike so it would have more low end. It was the big thing, like, like mm -hmm. everything. We wanted to make bikes that had a little more low end, um, so maybe not as revvy so much, but just a little bit more low end mm -hmm. to make the bike okay. more rideable. Yeah. Um, how is the 350 in popularity for KTM USA? Is it? It's, I'm sure you sell everyone you bring in. It's like one of our better selling motorcycles. I mean, and it. Yeah, from my experience at our dealership, the 350 is probably you know the it's, it's the best selling um, of the motocross and off road four strokes without a doubt. It's, it's for the all around guy, the guy that you could go do moto one day, you could do some off road on it, you could go out and and ride, you know desert, whatever you want. And the 350 is kind of crossover between them all. Um, I know a lot of us like 450s and we talk a lot about 450s and horsepower, but it seems to me that the 350 has bridged that gap between a guy that wants an all around bike to having a full six. He's right about this too. The last 350 that I rode, I felt the same way. Um, you get almost that grunt that we love out of the 450s, but uh, you get none of the vibration, none of the gyro effect, none of the inertia. And uh, I was uh, about to swap to a 350, and then I rode this new 450, which feels lighter, feels nimbler, it feels livelier, it revs quicker, it over revs more. Um, so I'm pretty happy on the 450 for right now. But yeah, I, I agree with him there. 50 horsepower 450 race bike. How did the uh, goalie locks and three bears go? Like, would this be mama bears? This be, like, yeah, just the right? middle mama bear, yeah, yeah, just right, yeah. Well, uh, okay, so 2023 bikes, I think they're already on dealership floors, right, or some? No, they're on the way, they're on, they're the, on way. the way. They, they should be in the dealership. Okay, today. so he says uh, these base models should be on the dealership floor in a couple weeks, late May or early June. Um, I can tell you that the packet the dealers got says July on these bikes. So keep that in mind. Um, and I know there was some delays with the factory edition, but I think the same fellow said in a video earlier this year that the factory editions were gonna be arriving in late January. Mine didn't arrive until um, May, you know, the last week of April. So uh, keep that in mind. If you're wanting one of these, you, you may be waiting until July. Couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. Yeah. So uh, late, late May, early yeah. June. Yeah. Okay. Big question. Do you have prices in that head of yours? No, I do not. You do not. The okay. prices are not available yet. Oh, they're not available. Yeah, we don't have the price available yet. Okay. And you know, with that, like, and Don, we were talking earlier. And the prices are not available. I don't understand this. This is just isn't true. Um, I don't. I mean, I assume this was just filmed a few days ago. Um, the prices. The prices were sent to dealers. Uh, over a month ago, I've got videos up on YouTube with the prices. Um, I mean, as of a week ago, the prices are are on the website. I think MSRP prices, um, but yeah, the MSRP prices are very very readily available. I don't know. I don't know why he saying things they aren't. We we're talking about how they come out earlier and earlier every year, and this year's early for us, no doubt about it. And that's partly because. As you know, we're a group now with a bunch of other brands, so the production schedule had to get pushed so we can get everything else out in time for summer. So yeah, we're a little bit early, and obviously we're early because this is a new generation that came from the factory edition, so had the parts, had everything going already, so they decided that we're gonna go early with KTM, 
and uh, you know, then our next bikes will continue to come in the next few weeks or a month. I don't have a clue what he's talking about here. Um, he's talking about the groups and how they got everything out earlier. Well, the gas gases are unchanged, and uh, you know they've been arriving. They've they've already been arriving at dealerships. Some of them, the Huskies, you know, are the same thing as the KTM's with with different plastics virtually. Um, I don't understand how getting out four all new motorcycles. They managed to get them out earlier than normal, but props to KTM. They did a great job. Um, if that's the case, then next year they should be out even earlier because there won't be as many changes. So, um, But either way, uh, thanks to Swap Moto and uh, Don and those guys for getting us out uh, some videos from Redbud, man. Appreciate them. All right, that's just kind of my thoughts on what they're talking about here. Um, if you guys got any questions, comments, leave them down below. I'll see you in the next video.